let's just sew whatever. All right, you guys, I am super excited today to be showing you how to cut and interface the Beachcomber pouch from Needle and Anchor Supply Co. I absolutely love the way she has her patterns laid out. She has this great cutting list. I went ahead and printed mine out on just regular paper and I used tape so that I could use a dry erase marker on the little cutting list. So this makes it easy for you to just check off what you're doing as you go. I'm gonna be using this vinyl. I believe this is from Bodio, um, maybe My Punk Broidery. So I'm gonna be using this vinyl for the accent pieces and the back panel. I thought this would be really fun. So this is gonna be my fabric two and three. Uh, basically, um, I'm gonna use it as the gusset, the back panel, the top band, and the contrast pieces. So, um, so we'll just go ahead and get started there. Um, I don't need any interfacing on the vinyl because it's going to hold its shape very well and it's gonna be still usable in my um, domestic sewing machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a pen and just dive right in. So this is great because if you have scraps of fabric that you've been hoarding, you don't wanna throw it away, like you can use these beachcomber patterns that she has to kind of utilize those scraps. So I used cardstock to cut my pattern out and I taped it together. She has wonderful instructions for all of that. And I'm just slowly tracing around the pattern piece. And I use clips to hold the pattern piece in place as I'm working. It just kind of helps me so it doesn't shift. So I'm gonna set this in another pile because I'm gonna to need to use it to cut out my lining as well. And now we have these great little, you know, scrap buster pieces that we can use to get rid of these little bits and these odds and ends of vinyl. I love it. Or cotton or knit or whatever. So I only need one of one of the top bands, so I'm just gonna set this in another pile and kind of cross it off my cut list. So I've got my gusset out of exterior fabric done, and I've got my top band out of fabric done. One of the first times I ever saw those cut lists, I was like, okay, well, this is confusing. I, I can't. But once you kind of <laughs> look at it for a minute, take it in, they make it easier. Um, so I'm just kind of playing with the best way to lay this. I think I'm just gonna lay it up against this edge straight. And you could, of course, use this piece and flip it. However, she made it more beginner friendly by including a left side and a right side so that you don't have to flip it and get confused about mirror this, mirror that. So I only need one of those and one of these. So I can put that in the Dunzo pile. Um, the connector is definitely better out of fabric than out of vinyl. So I'm gonna set that in my other pile. Exterior center, I want that out of fabric. Recessed zipper panel, fabric, fabric zipper end. And then here's my lining and my back. So I'll cut one of these out as well. So then you're just gonna cut on your ballpoint line or your marked out line.
I like to make my lines as clean as possible by going in one direction first. You can just kind of remove as you go. And you could save these little scraps and make zipper pulls if you wanted to or something, but I don't ever have the time to sit down and do that. So if you were using a regular cotton fabric for any of these pieces, you definitely wanna go ahead and interface it with a, um, like a woven interfacing. So either SF 101, Woven Fuse or Woven Fuse 2. I don't think any part of this really needs Decaville unless you're using all cotton for your bag and then maybe you'd want the exterior gusset to have the Decaville so it stands up nicely on its own. So that's it for the pieces that I'm going to be cutting vinyl. And so I've got my left side contrast, my right side contrast. The top band is done. I've got my exterior back. And then, like we said, the gusset, I just need to do the lining. So now we can move on to our exterior fabric. So I'm going to be using this purple flying key print that I designed. Um, it's going to be available on my website on June 1st. And these are limited run fabrics, so if you need it, grab it <laughs> while you can. And then I can still see the print through the back side, so I'm just going to go ahead and trace from the back side. So we want this exterior front piece to be the print. Again, I can just trace along. And I really like using cardstock for my patterns if I can't get a template because as you can see, like the edge of my ballpoint pen just slides along it so nicely. So that's the only one we're gonna need of that so I can put this in my Dunzo pile. And then I need this connector so I can just kind of lay it here. You can of course use a rotary instead of tracing if you're good at that kind of thing. I'm not. <laughs> so for the fabric zipper end and for the connector, I'm not going to be using any interfacing just because I don't want it to be too thick. The fabric I'm using is more of a canvas than a regular woven. So that's why I've decided to omit it. And then for the recessed zipper panel, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna interface two of them and I'm gonna leave the other two uninterfaced so that it isn't too bulky. And that's just something that I found worked for me. And I am lining it with waterproof canvas. So that's gonna be some extra stability added there as well. Waterproof canvas really isn't too thick for domestic machines, um, especially if you're not using too much interfacing for your bag. Because I'll be using my um, domestic Juki to sew this. If you have an industrial machine, you will want to add a little bit more interfacing to some pieces so that it works better. 
and I need a total of four of these. So my <laughs> tracing isn't the best. You definitely could use a ruler to make this straighter. She does include measurements on all the pieces. So that's really nice. But hey, it works. and then we're done with that. So you can see it really doesn't take much fabric at all. This would be a great little project um, for like a teen sewer as well. With some guidance. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave those all together for now. Because I think I'm gonna cut it with a rotary so they're nice and straight. So that's it for that fabric. If you are using a thinner fabric for this connector, what I would recommend is adding like a one inch piece of maybe 809 or a scrap of woven fuse because you're going to fold it in half, in half, etc., etc. So you might want to have some stability in there so it's not weak. This is my fabric zipper end. Maybe don't get sidetracked before finishing the bag. Okay. So then I'm going to interface this with um, just a little scrap of woven fuse that I have sitting around to use it up. So this, like I said, it's just a great little fabric scrap buster. Okay, so I'll fuse that and trim everything down. And then I need to fuse just two of these, my zipper panels. Let me go ahead and cut it first. If you're using um, more of a thick canvas, you probably don't need to add any interfacing at all to the zipper panel, really. Um, that's just going to be your personal preference. All right, so for this lining, I'm using this really pretty purple waterproof canvas. I thought it matched nicely. And like I said, it isn't so thick that your machine can't sew through it, but it's just going to add a little bit more stability. So I'm just going to clip this in place in a few spots and trace around it with my scissors. I'm going to be increasing my seam allowance on the lining a little bit anyway. So if this isn't cut perfectly, I'm not super worried about it. Make sure you don't give yourself a paper cut because I have absolutely done that before. Okay, so my gusset is finished. So this can go in my Dunzo pile. And then I just need two of the lining. So there are no pockets included or anything like that that I know of or read about, but 
You can easily add a zipper pocket to the lining or a little slip pocket if you wanted to, depending on who it's going to be going to, what you think you'll use it for, that kind of thing. You can make those decisions. I like to do is trace one, flip it over, and just use the other fabric piece. And again, you're just gonna kind of take your scissors around the edges. And that's it. This bag is cut, this bag is interfaced, and this bag is ready to sew. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little video on how to cut and interface the bag. Hope it is a little less intimidating now. I know anytime you open a new pattern, you can look at it and go, I don't know what to do. There's a lot of words here. Um, so if you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment below, and let me know if you will be making this bag.